Hello everybody and welcome to HVAC training videos. Guys, I wish you could see behind the scenes here because it is a tight ship. Let me tell you, for the last five minutes before I restarted the stream, I was talking and thought I was live. I was looking at the camera. I legitimately thought it was live. I looked over at the screen and it said, uh, people are waiting. I said, well, why are people waiting? The stream has started. And I realized whenever you're doing it, you have like a broadcast software, which I'm looking at right here. And over here is the YouTube software. And there are two buttons you have to hit. So you have to hit the first button. Then you have, have to hit the second button. And I hit the first button, but not the second button. So I'm going to kind of do an abbreviated version of what I just said, because I feel like I just said it like two seconds ago, which I did. So I want to say hello to the people in the chat. And hopefully you can hear me. And now I'm going to be paranoid that you can't because I didn't hit the two buttons, as I mentioned before. Good evening to Will Justice. Hello, Will. HVAC Residential Basics, our buddy Steve, who's out to get tacos tonight. Josh Moore, who helped me realize I was not live by asking, are you live yet? And I'd been talking for like three minutes. So, good. I gave Steve long enough to get home with his tacos, so that's mission accomplished there. Clint Glasgow, what's happening? Clint's always here, great supporter of the show. And anyone else that comes along in post, Thank you for watching. This is the HVAC Training Videos channel. Each week we're going to be live Friday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with a guest. Most likely a guest. Sometimes it'll be just me, but I'm going to try to have a guest every single week. And I'm going to run through this real quick because it's seeming real familiar. <laughs> uh, in case you didn't know, Skill Trade Up is on its own channel now. Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can play the Skill Trade Up game show. This week we were going to give away a Navag vacuum pump, but we had some crashing and burning. So we didn't give it away, but we're going to have it again next week, and we're going to have some Yellow Jacket prizes. So we have Bacharach hats and stickers. We have refrigeration technologies, gear, the whole line of their products. We have them to give away. So we were going to give away some of those too. And what happens on the show is when you win a first prize, you can risk it to go to a higher level, or you can walk away with your prize. And our guys and girls have a hard time walking away without going to the final level. So we get a lot of crashing and burning, but hey, I respect it. You know, it's uh, it's the balls to the wall method, which I think is implemented often in the skilled trade up game show. But if you do, like I said, go balls to the wall. You can win yourself a vacuum pump. We're going to be giving away digital gauges. We have some Y Jack probes on the way, some like clothes from different people like Bacharach, some Shop Talk shirts. We're going to have some Yellow Jacket stuff. They always send like some random stuff like polos and stuff like that. So it's, it's nice stuff. So. All right, welcome to the show as well, HVAC Game Proper. We do have Greg Fox waiting here. We're going to get to him in just a second. We're going to have a little small business talk, which I thought would be good. I've run a small business for a long time. Mine is a little bit different than Greg's. Greg started out and built up to several employees. I kind of stayed the same throughout the whole time. So a little bit of uh, two different experiences there, which we can kind of share and kind of compare and contrast what's happened over the last few years. I think, and I'll ask Greg about it in just a second. I think he's been in business, and I can look at the monitor. About five years or so, Greg. Does that sound about right? Five years or so? Because I remember him going to get all of his certifications and stuff. Because it happened on YouTube. We're kind of following along with him as his business started. So that was kind of cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick little break. And we're going to pop back in with Greg Fox. Refrigeration Technologies makes some of the best HVAC chemicals around. And that includes wet rag heat blocking putty that prevents your vital system components from being damaged while you're brazing. Also, there's nylog, gasket and thread sealant, a variety of uses including sealing up flares, gaskets, and other HVAC joints and connections. Last but not least, there's Viper aerosol cleaner. I use it on evaporator coils. It foams up beautifully, does a great job cleaning. So if you need anything in the HVAC chemical arena, Choose Refrigeration Technologies. You can find out more at refrigetech.com and purchase at truetechtools.com. All right, here we go. Greg Fox, how's it going? Good. How are you guys doing? <laughs> I just hope this thing holds together, man. I mean, I was running by the seat of my pants for a minute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Greg had to watch the intro twice, everybody. <laughs> hey, man, how's it going? It's been a while since I talked to you, man. How's it going? Yeah, fantastic, man. I uh, business is booming this year. What uh, COVID hit earlier in the year, and I thought stuff was just going to tank, 
and it did just the opposite. It was the absolute most insane summer ever, and thank God. So how did that happen? How did COVID hit, and you somehow kind of had a, a boom? Is it related, or just you happened to be growing at that time? No, I mean, you know, so March hit, right? And then uh, and as soon as April hit, we had to do our 30 days in home. You know, everybody had to stay inside here in California. And so April was so boring and it was very dismal uh, outlook. And uh, and then uh, May hit up and we started getting our, you know, we started getting our uh, estimates. You know, a lot of system estimates start hitting usually in April and May. Uh, going into, you know, going into the summer, people don't want to, you know, lose their uh, AC. And so they pro start proactively uh, changing out their systems. So, so we, we just got nailed. I mean, like our, our, my service techs are, they're the service techs, they're the maintenance guys, but they're also the installers. And they're also the sales guys, like four of my guys can actually go out and sell systems. So including myself, but uh, as soon as they, I mean, they were just turning over systems left and right. And uh, so it seemed like we were installing almost every other day. Um, and so what was going on was, you know, people had a lot more discretionary money. Uh, they weren't going on vacation. They weren't going to restaurants and they weren't going to movie theaters, spending their money there. Uh, if they had to work at home, they were going to kind of spruce up their home and they were going to make their homes comfortable and uh, get their indoor air quality set straight and stuff like that. So, um yeah, it it was absolutely slammed. Uh, Goodman, Train, Linux, you name it. You, every single distributor was down to the bone in inventory. Equipment inventory was absolutely down to the bone and still is really. Do you think these folks were at home for the first time in a while having to stay there all day and all night and suddenly realizing their AC was not cutting it any longer? I think so. I think so. And indoor air quality became such a huge buzz this year that um, – you name it, APCO, Air Scrubber, iWave, they were all just like flying out the door. So what was the complaint from folks now that uh, had you installing some IEQ products? You know, I think just just in general, you know, like uh, the main question was, will it kill uh, COVID virus? You know, yeah, right and, on, right on. Yeah. Uh, you know, so that was the most popular question. Um, and so I was able to actually listen to some good uh, podcast, video podcast uh, this, you know, early on. And there was an expert that did uh, did an interview on uh, air scrubbers, like UV lights and and air cleaners, and what they what they do and everything. So when you're able to tell somebody that a single cell DNA or RNA, like a COVID virus or <clears throat> any other single cell virus, is actually probably one of the most easiest things to kill for the UV bulbs or the I wave ionization process. Um, because uh, you know those those waves and those uh, ions are basically disrupting, like um, sort of penetrating the fine protein layer that surrounds that single cell RNA and DNA, making it you know pretty easy to 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 render them um, sterile so that they can't reproduce anymore and 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 work. So then you got multi cell bacteria, then you got mold and spores. Mold and spores are obviously the hardest to clean out of all that stuff. But uh, the single cell and the multi-cell uh, bacteria, that that was the buzzword. And, you know, and so people are like, okay, so that will clean my house, right? And so I think a lot of people, you know, air scrubbers uh, plus would say that, uh, oh, well, it'll, you know, it comes out of the registers and it lands on the surfaces and cleans your surfaces and stuff too. Well, I mean, you know, we had to tell people that, you know, like, it, I mean, if, if you were to like sneeze on the countertop and there was like droplets on the counter, no air scrubber is going to clean that. You know what I mean? So it's, uh, you got to do your part. You got to clean your surfaces and we can clean your air at the same time. So, um, but that was the main concern, you know, just can it kill the COVID virus? That was pretty much what it all came down to. Yeah. I guess, uh, there was some, definitely some predatory stuff that came out, but you seem to have studied the viruses in particular with the protein shells and stuff like that. Actually, I talked to Brian Orr about that. And I think he did a podcast. Maybe he's the one with the air scrubbing podcast. I'm not sure. But uh, where did you learn about all this stuff? Was it just from the podcasts that were released or did you guys go to like a class on this stuff or how did that work? It was, you know what? I think it was Brian Orr's uh, podcast that he did. And he was actually interviewing somebody on, God, I want to say it was Brian. Uh, Cause I, I do pay attention to a lot of stuff he puts out. Um, but he had an expert uh, who worked in the industry for a long time and that those words that I was just saying are the words that he was saying, you know, and, um, 
Well, I'm going to try yeah. to find it real quick so I can tell people if I can actually Google while we're talking <laughs> here. Yeah. Air Scrubber Podcast. I'm not getting anything. Well, we, we can figure that. It was probably HVAC school. I know when he came, he talked to me for about 20 or 25 minutes about COVID-19. And I think he had just come off the back of doing a podcast on it, which might be the podcast you're talking about. So, mm-hmm. But I figure you'll probably be able to, guys out there could probably search the podcast apps and find that. So a cool subject because you kind of learn, like, like Greg's saying, you're not killing anything. You're sterilizing it. So it's not reproducing. So you're not actually yep. destroying it altogether, which was kind of neat. Which really grosses out customers at home too when you explain it like that. They're like, "Oh, reproducing!" Ew. <laughs> yeah, it's all over everything, including <laughs> you right now. And he's like, "What?" Yeah, you, you got it on you. You know, you know, one of the other th- big things that I took out of that conversation was he was saying you really got to have your airspeed down right going through the furnace because, you know, uh, when your when your AC is not on or your furnace is not on, you might have your your fan in the on position or in a. Um, uh, like a circulate mode where it's on for 20 minutes out of every hour, mm-hmm. but that's typically on a low speed and low lower speed is better for that virus. If you think about a Frisbee going through the furnace, you know, that's the virus, the fire, the virus being the Frisbee, you know, that Frisbee needs to be going through it right at the right speed so that the bulb can effectively do its job or the ionization process can do its job. If your airspeed is set too high, you know, just go right through right. there and not not really do it. You need to get more cycles uh, before it can kill that stuff. You know, so airspeed is very important. And this is in a in a in a time when we have a lot of excess airspeeds anyway because the ducting's too small. So the air is just rushing through the ducting a lot of times. And and I remember hearing this because when we were setting or when I was setting a mana a long time ago, we were using media filters. There were airspeed requirements for it to be effective. And we would run them, I think it was at 25%, like you're saying, a really low speed. And you'd either do it all the time or you would do it in circulating mode where it'd be like on, off, and you can kind of adapt it on some of the thermostats, how often you want it to run. But then it comes along and says it's going to cause the the sweat on your coil to be picked up and evaporated back into the air. So now I'm paranoid about that because you actually rehumidify after dehumidifying. Right. So it's like, come on, man. There's a, there's, there's a no-win situation. So I kind of experiment with it, you know, but it's such as life. You're trying to solve one problem and you worsen another problem because moisture makes the problem worse too if it's moist. Absolutely. So. What, a, what a pain. What a pain. But you're not one of those guys out there running around shouting mold, mold everywhere. Change it all out. <laughs> oh, exactly right. <laughs> Grab a handful of sand and throw it into the heat exchanger. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> That's, that's Dacobotrys mold. That was like the big buzzword. Back when we had to have continuing ed for our contractor's licenses, the same story yeah. every year. They had the black mold, and the guy's like, that's called Stachybotrys mold. It can cause, and we're like, can it kill you? It's like, well, probably not. <laughs> It'll give you respiratory problems. I said, it can't even kill you? We don't care. Because <laughs> every time you open an air handler, all you see is mold on the inside of it. The tag's got mold all over Any paper part of the air handler has mold all over mm. it. But, but I didn't bring you here to talk about this, Greg, I, although I want to touch base with you, and I actually want to ask you one other thing, or talk about one other thing, because I saw on Facebook you're moving in to a brand new warehouse. I wanted to congratulate you and get like a general update, because I've been following you since you started, with, not even with the contractor's license yet, just running service calls before you could even do the jobs, and you came up through YouTube, and now you have how many people, how many trucks? Just give us like a, a brief overview of where you're at. Yeah, man, I appreciate that so much. Um, so, you know, we started in 2015 and uh, it started out with just me running the show, answering the calls, uh, going and getting permits, doing the installs, doing the service calls, doing everything, you know. And then uh, Melissa came on. Uh, I was very, e- very quickly, I was able to pick up Keith and he's still with me five years later. He's my field supervisor now. Um, we've been able to, um, we have six guys right now. Um, we moved into this warehouse three years ago and we've been paying a yearly lease on it. Um, we got a 2000 square foot warehouse. A lot of my videos, uh, in the last year or two have been me standing up in the upper balcony above this office, kind of pointing out into the warehouse, the garage door in the back and everything. And, uh, so we have like a one garage door warehouse. It's like, I don't know, 20 feet wide. And, um, Pretty cool. I mean, I, I really enjoyed being in it, but we certainly have grown out of it, uh, th- especially with the summer, you know, how busy we got. It was uh, where we would have, 
you know, two or three, not only two, but like sometimes three and four installs. It's it's just crazy. This year really took off for us. I mean, so we would have two installs one day, two installs the next day. Just, we just hadn't hit those levels before. So we really started growing out of the warehouse, running out of space quick. And it's still, is it, is it train or now, now what are you doing? Cause you were doing Ameristar back in the day. Is it train Ameristar still or did you change yeah, it Yeah, it's up? always been train. Um, yeah. So it's always been train. I was a, you know, TCS dealer for a long time, but man, they charge you $5,000 to be a TCS dealer now. Um, That's incredible. And the benefits really are much, you know, it's, it's really, it was 3000 before and it was, it was okay. You know, just be like, Hey, I'm a TCS dealer. Cause there was only a handful of us around town. But uh, so I stopped doing that. But I, I am still a proud train dealer. I love installing train. I still feel like uh, train. I work on trains less than anything else, any other brand. And that's why I install. That's why we sell train. Um, and it's American made. You know, I, I'm really proud of that as well. So Tyler, Texas, New Jersey, Atlanta, Georgia, Panama City, Florida. Um, so. And that's but train back to comfort the company. specialist. Mm-hmm. Train comfort specialist is what you're referring to. In case someone's wondering yes. what TCS means. Yeah, TCS dealer. Right. Um, and um, so back to the warehouse, um, we really just kind of outgrew ourselves when you had just like system, you know, five or six systems stacking up there in front of my workbench, in, in front of the shelves that we keep our inventory in front of, and I keep my trailer in here. So it just ran out of space. So uh, literally, the next building over, we found out that a tenant who's been in that double wide uh, warehouse, that two garage door warehouse, the 4,000 square foot warehouse, he's been there for 25 years and he's a patio. Wow. Yeah, he's been a, he's a patio uh, installer and he doesn't really need the, the brick and mortar store anymore. So, um, so we were able to pick that up as our lease ran out, his, la- his ran out, we were able to pick that up and we started moving in this week to a 4,000 square foot um, warehouse, a beautiful office. They redid the front office. So Melissa's super excited. We got new carpet, new paint on the walls, new lighting on the inside, new electrical. They, they took out a wall that we wanted. Like this one wall was sort of just taking up too much space and the landlord was cool enough to take out that wall for us and just really opened up the room for us. So that's awesome. Very, yeah, man. And, uh, your wife is Melissa. You're talking about is your wife mm-hmm. and she does. And she's like the bookkeeper. Remind me what she does. Yeah. So Melissa has, uh, so we got Sasha, Keith's wife, who uh, answers the phone, and she's our chaos coordinator. She's the uh, person who talks to, you know, she she schedules and routes all the the technicians, and she really does a damn good job of routing those folks too. I mean, we we, we have like a, a a really wide area that we we um, run in. It's thirty five miles in any direction from here from the shop here. So. So, if, you know, if you can route them nicely, it'd be cool. <laughs> and is that, so she does that does, include Sacramento City? Yeah, Sac City, Sac okay. County, um, parts of Placer County, parts of El Dorado County. And uh, Sacramento County actually goes south quite a bit. So um, so it's really big area. It's about 35 mile um, in any direction that we'll go. Um, but uh, And then so Melissa does the human resources, the accounting, uh, she does amazing, amazing job of the finances, you know, Zach, from running your own business. Anybody can be the tech. It's super easy to be the tech who has become the entrepreneur. But if you don't have those finances down, it you're, you'll lose it. You will lose mm-hmm. it right under your feet because uh, if your finances aren't solid, you will not be able to run that business and you'll go out of business, you know. So. Absolutely. Pull some hair out, too. I mean, dealing with the finances, that if you don't do the finances and the books correctly, then you're dealing with the government and you have double problems. Exactly. It's not good. Exactly. It's not good. So I'm able, you know, they're able to take off all that load from me uh, of the administrative portion. Keith is able to take off the load from the service techs because they all come to him for uh, advice or any information or we all call each other on, on service calls. I mean, I say we all, but the, all the techs call each other um much like everywhere else, but you know, it's the brotherhood out there. You know, if we get stumped on something you feel like, Hey, I'll call Zach real quick and see if he can get me through this call or see, you know, just get, I don't know, get a second set of eyes on it. Um, but uh, Keith absorbs a lot of that for me. So I'm in the middle and I'm just kind of like the face, like the happy face in the middle. Just uh, it's, it's, it's an honor, you know, it's an honor, but it's also weird because I'm not working hard every day. And I'm not answering phones every day. I'm just kind of here. 
Well, you know, Greg, <laughs> he's in charge of boat shopping. He goes boat shopping and uh, plays hockey. Uh, that's Greg's job. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> when the mayor right. comes by to cut a ribbon or something, he has to be there for that. <laughs> right. I recall you know, that I, you did something like that at the last warehouse. That's why I thought about that. It's some kind of city function, and you guys had it at, yeah. at your warehouse, right? That's right. Yeah, the um, – the, uh, um, Chamber of Commerce came over and they did a That's ribbon right. cutting. They actually had five ribbon cuttings that day. So for them to pull that off in one day, that is pretty awesome. But uh, Rancho Cordova Chamber of Commerce, I, I really enjoy being a part of that group. Um, uh, it's a, you know, very commercial city. So, I mean, there's lots of residential, but there's lots of commercial buildings. Um, so, and that's, that's in a suburban part outside of Sacramento, and yeah, they come over there and we did the big ribbon cutting. That was three years ago, Zach. And that, yeah. that actually came up on my Facebook as a memory. Like you just, opened, you know, like here's you in your brand new warehouse three years ago. I'm like, <laughs> oh, wow. That's right. I remember that. Yeah, it was right when you uh, moved into that warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Time flies, dude. I mean, I was just thinking about the other day whenever I was going to ask you to come back on here. I know we've been trying to do this for a little while. I was thinking, man, it, it must have been at least five years since you opened this thing. But it yeah. seems like it was just yesterday. It all right. happened. Have you done so and well Zach, with it? Zach, I was watching you as I was starting up, dude. So, I mean, like, I was totally taking guy, advice from guys like you. Uh, and you're still who, successful anyway. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you had some serious talks in your truck. I mean, you would talk to the camera and you would talk to us. Yeah. I felt like you were talking to me as a new entrepreneur, uh, as a technician who wanted to get out in the field and start their own business. You know, there was like this one church who didn't pay for a heat exchanger that you were stranded with. You know I what remember, I mean? Yeah. And you were depressed, man. Like, you know, that's like that was like, it's you a know, big hit. I should have, you were like, hit. I should have, I should have collected up front, you know, or whatever, you know. And then I just got stiffed on that, and and uh, so yeah. I learned a lot from guys like you coming into it too. So no, that's true. There's some lessons learned that uh, even though our businesses are not similar in the fact that you've taken it to a different scope. Obviously, you've you've grown, and I've stayed, or I did stay as a one man company for ninety nine percent of that time. There are some universal business issues. Getting paid from customers and customer relations is definitely one of those, and it can be a little bit. It's different for someone like me because uh, it's almost like there's no escape. There's no buffer between because I'm the technician and I'm the guy they call, so it can be kind of cumbersome. And that's one of the reasons it gets a little bit old, I think, and why I think you're wiser for what you've done. Because you're in a position where you have those different layers of the business, so you're not unloading any, you're not overloading anybody in particular. You each have a right. job, and it works as a unit, which I think is smart. Sorry. It really does. My, I feel Melissa and I feel like our job is to take care of the techs, to take take care of Sasha. I take care of Melissa, and uh, so if if our job is to take care of them, and they've done a hell of a job taking care of our people. If you look at our reviews online on Google, you will be hard pressed to find a one. Uh, you'll you'll find maybe four one-star ratings. And I think two of those are from the same person. <laughs> That's how it goes on uh, Google, yeah. It just goes to speak like, like as the owner, your job is to take care of your people. Let them, you know, have the autonomy to go out and do the job the way they know how to do. Like you hired these people. Now let them go. Don't micromanage them They'll or they'll leave you, you know? So um, guy, Eric today, uh, one of my new hires, Eric, he's been with us for uh, a little over a year. And he came in brand new. I knew his father. Uh, in fact, I played I played hockey with Eric and uh, and his dad. Um, and so we went and did a maintenance over at his dad's house. And then we ended up hiring Eric on, trained him up from totally green. Like he was a manager at Starbucks. And then we were and Keith was able oh, wow. to take him uh, be, because he's a guy with a with an awesome personality, a little bit shy, but really polite. You know what I mean? His dad is a was a, a major in the army, so he grew up in a military household, structured family, and uh, so this this just goes to show where you can take a person who has a great attitude, great personality, and make them into a technician. I can take anybody with a great personality and make them a great technician, but you so, sometimes you can't take a great technician and teach them how to, how to have a great per personality. You know, you cannot teach that to somebody. So um, sure. here, I've given him two raises already, uh, in the year. Sorry. And then, so he's, he's, he's moved up quite a bit because he started taking on some service roles and then I've given him two bonuses already. So just today we gave him a, a check for a thousand bucks, you know, just like, dude, thank you for being on time. Thank you for not complaining. You really seem to just embrace 
the position that you're in. You don't whine about anything and just thank you so much, you know, so thousand bucks. A bonus you know, he so. wasn't aware that was coming? No, he didn't know that was coming. Oh, we, what we an called, awesome we, surprise that was. Yeah, we called him into the office this morning um, and me and Keith and Melissa sat in the office and just told him how much we appreciate him. Because, you know, a couple of our guys have been showing up the job late, you know, and I have to pick and choose my battles as far as, you know, um, how far I'm going to go with disciplining people. But but you take a guy like Eric who sees these experienced technicians showing up late to the job and yet he's still coming to work 10 to 15 minutes early every day with a great attitude. And you got to recognize that stuff, you know? I think that's absolutely right. I mean, positive reinforcement. Those other guys are going to notice when Eric says, I just earned like $1,000. <laughs> What'd you do How to show up on time? I mean, it seems pretty good. <laughs> <Right. laughs> that requirement, what a, what a great thing to do that's so easy that when you don't do it, it's so apparent that it seems like you just don't care. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. it just when someone didn't show up on time and let's, no one remind me about YouTube streams that were late. That's not what I'm talking about, but at work. <laughs> So it, it's just something that I always noticed and always stuck with me. It's like, this person doesn't care. One minute late, it's like, this person does not care about this job. And, you know, it's yeah. just something that bosses think. I always thought like that. And I had an, I had an apprentice for a week. He didn't show up a couple of times, and then I went back to being alone. So that's just the way yeah. I was. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to choose this time to make a segue because you said you went to Eric's dad's house on a PM, mm -hmm. and that's good enough for me for a segue. So we're going to talk about PMs, which is something I want to talk with you about because I know you have a structure in place, and mm -hmm. and you refer to them as club memberships, as I recall. Right. And that's still your current structure. Yes, it is. Okay. Nothing changes. So what I want to talk about is you do, and I'm putting words in your mouth, so tell me if I remember incorrectly, you do a monthly and or a yearly, mm -hmm. uh, and so you can choose which way you want to pay for PMs. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Why did you create that structure? Why didn't you do just a yearly or biannually or, or whatever? Why did you add this monthly pay structure? Well, honestly, it's not my, uh, you know, I didn't create this, uh, you know, I didn't re I didn't invent the wheel here. Like this is, uh, all common practices from, uh, you know, the old airtime 500 days. Um, uh, the companies that are out there, um, like, I don't know, like Nexstar or something like that, you know, there's a lot of these companies that are out there trying to teach companies how to, you know, sell more and do maintenance clubs and stuff. But, you know, I, I worked for one of the big companies in town uh, for five and a half years before I went out on my own and they had their maintenance club membership going. I saw how um, beneficial it was in the fact that I saw other companies having to lay their people off uh, during the shoulder season and then try to rehire them back in, in the busy season. Um, and a lot of techs, a lot of HVAC techs are used to that. You know, they'll paint in the shoulder season and they're doing HVAC in the, you know, in the busy seasons. But uh, maintenance club memberships, you know, if you have a thousand club members, uh, in, in their case, they had 14,000 club members at that time. Wow. I think they have way more than that now. Um, but that, you know, that gives your technician something to do in the off season. I recognize that it's also a recurring monthly source of, of revenue or an annual source of revenue. So when, um, when you go to sell your company someday, that's very enticing for the people who buy your company is like, well, what else do you have? Do you have any recurring, you know, income and, you know, where you're generating monthly income like that. And, um, just as a business owner, I've just learned that that's, that's smart to do, you know? So can you tell me, um, I don't know if you want to do this or not, the pricing on your stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I we try to make it so like it's a no-brainer. When we come out and and uh, uh, say we come out to a service call and a $75 service call with a $290 capacitor, right? And uh, we end up saying, oh, this is going to be a cap and a club. You know, cap and a club. It's probably going to be a pretty easy, you know, call, you know, so. Oh I love it. You can tell that's been said like a million times already. Yeah. Cap in a club? Cap in a club. All right. Cap in a club. In. Yeah. Or even in your mind when you're riding to the car, you know, when you're riding, you're driving to the call, you're like, oh, this is going to be a cap in a club. So, <laughs> uh, so what we do <clears throat> is uh, we're fourteen ninety five a month or one seventy nine forty for the year. And that prepays for us to come out twice a year, uh, once in the fall and uh, once in the spring. Uh, to get your AC tuned up. We have about a 50-point checklist that I put together. 
And I've actually written it out on paper so that the guys can start up at the top left at the thermostat and air filter and then work their way all the way through the condensate drainage, the amp draws, the microfarads, uh, uh, checking the blower wheel for cleanliness and then moving out to the outdoor unit to the AC and clean, you know, and we're cleaning the whole time too on the outdoor unit, checking all the amp draws, checking and I, I we don't have them checking refrigerant pressures because I'm not a big fan of hooking up on every maintenance call. You know, I feel like there's nothing wrong with this system and you have a good temp split up at the uh, system. I'm not, I, I, I try not to encourage the guys to hook up every, every time. That's interesting. So, That's uh, an interesting change. Let's stop there for a second because a lot of people do this, this non-invasive stuff now. Uh, honestly, I, I, I typically do hook up still. Uh, just me mm-hmm. personally, but a lot of people are doing the same because just like you said, every time you hook up, you're losing a little bit of gas every time you hook up. And the possibility of uh, introducing oh, yeah. contaminants. Absolutely. And uh, if you have a system of any age, as I found out on my last service call, you're asking if I still did them. And uh, I did one a couple weeks ago and it was an old ream unit and both, both Schrader's stuck whenever I hooked up and took off. Now, yeah. if you are, you know, a good person and like to sleep at night, you will change the Schraders out. But on occasion, you'll have someone put a cap on it and just tighten it up real tight. So just, you're going to have issues <laughs> eventually, yeah. you know, or you just, yeah. at least you're going to have whoosh, every time you take it off. Right. But you know, it's really interesting. So, I mean, was that always the way you did it or did you come across and just say, all right, we're just going to not do this part because we feel like it's just yeah. not instrumental that we do this every single time. I evolved into that person and the company I was working for before had this like, you got to hook up every time. And, you know, uh, when you do t- come, get the customer, you bring them out to the air conditioner, you need to have them. That way you bring them into your office and they see you have the gauges on. Those are like your stethoscope for a doctor, you know, and if you don't have your gauges hooked up, then you're not a real technician. And so like that was like their thing, right? But then I would follow, I would go behind sometimes and I would find exactly what we were just talking about. And the cap, you know, you'd turn off the cap, uh, twist off the cap and the Schrader's leaking or something like that. And if I don't have to put myself in that situation, if I have a 20 degree temp split, an 18 to 22 degree temp split, um, then you do the same for Mitsubishi mini splits. You know, you don't hook up on mini splits every time, right? You just go in, you check your temp split. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and if you are, if you do have a low temp split, then, then, then you can go in and start diagnosing. So that's just, I feel strongly about it. And there's a a lot of other, uh, there's a lot of other technicians that feel really strongly. We were just on the house call pro, um, (laughs) you know, HVAC question and answer. It was a bunch of us contractors, uh, talking about, to each other and when i said that this other contractor was like i firmly disagree with that you know <laughs> you need to hook up every single time or you don't you're not getting a true evaluation of how the system's running i'm like <laughs> it's like nah nah um i now i see your point and i i have done it the opposite way I, honestly i've done it the opposite way but i understand what you're saying because you're weighing against some some negatives against some positives and only after time can you really decide whether that's going to be the right way to go but that is the general motion of the trade is to go away from hooking up gauges every time. You're right. That's what I've noticed over a few, a few years. You know, I know Ralph. Ralph does Mitsubishi stuff. He would agree with what you just said. Mitsubishi, you don't hook up gauges every time because it's not exactly it's not useful information like it once was in that area anyway. That's interesting. I, I like that. So do you include like coil cleanings? And I, and I will say indoor because no one, I don't think, would include an indoor coil cleaning, but an outdoor coil cleaning with your PM? Absolutely. And that's that's guaranteed every time. you you got to take a hose to them coils. Um, I think that's that's a no-brainer every single time. Uh, I, I try not to let the guys, you know, if, if they don't need a chemical clean or, you know, that sounds harsh, but if they don't need <clears throat> to do the soapy bubbles and everything, then don't. You know what I mean? Just, just – uh, you know, a because they might have a dog that's in the backyard, and then the dog comes and licks up around the, you know, right. licks up the soapy bubbles. Now you got to stop the sick dog, so you have to think about liabilities like that. But um, you know, also just you know, you just don't want anything to eat up at the coils either. If you don't, you know, if you don't rinse it all off uh, thoroughly, you can cause more issues. So everything sure. we're doing is trying to be preventive. If you really do need to take the soap sprayer to it, let it soak. I've done it. I love this stuff. Put the purple stuff on there and let it sit and it just shines it up beautifully. You know, it takes a lot of the oxidation off the paint and stuff and cleans it up nicely, you know, but maybe not every time. 
you know, so. Yeah, and if you, you're you coming back year after year, water may be the trick anyway, because if you're exactly. making sure it's staying maintained, maybe not the first time, maybe the first time you use just some brightener or something, <laughs> mm-hmm. but right. after that you can just use water. Well, that's interesting because, you know, people, they go from business to business, and I struggle with this too because I changed my PM program a few different times because I, I was trying to figure out what I should include and not include based on how much money I was charging, how much time I was there. Now, let me ask you something about, the money that goes into these things Mm -hmm. are the money is the money you're making from this just do you see it as like a loss leader that it doesn't matter how much money you make you're just keeping contact and you're and you're basically investing in a later profit absolutely we're creating relationships with customers that 75 dollar tune-up that 75 dollar tune-up i am losing money on that because you know i mean it takes like it's 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 basically like a couple hundred bucks just to roll your truck to the to the call, you know, sure. and then to you know spend an hour, just spend forty five minutes to an hour and a half on that call. Um, yeah, it's a pretty expensive, but it's an investment for the future. It's creating relationships. It's showing the customer that every time I come out to your house, I'm not going to try and sell you something, which a lot of people would stab me in the back for uh, listening to that. Uh, working <laughs> for those big companies, but that's just not the company we want to be. We want to we want to earn your trust so that uh, someday when you do decide to change that system out then maybe you'll give us a chance to bid on it, you know, and, uh, and that's what it's all about. So 1495 a month or 17940 from the year for the year. If I decide to raise my price, um, you know, every few years, maybe that club membership goes up, but the people who are at, in at 1495 a month, they're grandfathered in forever. So as long as you stay with us, don't let your membership lapse, then, uh, will you're grandfathered in on that price. So how many, <clears throat> of the contracts do you have now do you recall yep we're at a thousand <clears throat> now is that something year, is there a number on the board it's like we hit a thousand yes yeah it's like nine uh we were at a thousand seventeen and then this summer i think a lot of people with their you know people you know some people being furloughed and laid off decided you know that some of their discretionary spending <clears throat> needed to go away uh things like Things like club memberships, you know, fourteen ninety five a month, or people's cable bills, or something like that. It cut the cable, and <clears throat> so yeah, you and Netflix got axed, or something. Right, like that. exactly by by several people. So I think we're down to nine sixty five right now, but we're clubbing people every day, and we're losing people, yeah. you know, like, every day. I, is that is that the line? I'm, we're clubbing <laughs> people every day. <laughs> I know I, it's a bad it's a bad habit of mine to say. It's probably not right to say. I, I love that actually. It's like real. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Neanderthal like we're gonna we're clubbing <laughs> new members every day. <laughs> we're clubbing with our members, depending on how it's old a they are. verb. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's great. Um, let's see. Do you try to sell these memberships on every service call? Is that a thing that's implemented into service call? Like you do a service call, you say you had to replace <clears throat> a blower motor, you're replacing a capacitor, whatever you're doing, a dirty filter. Do you say if they're not on the club membership already, you know, we can make sure this thing is maintained properly by continuing with this yearly or is that how it works? Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the, that's what it is. is Every time you go out on a service call, you try to sell a club membership because the, uh, the guys get $20 for every service call they, or every club membership they sell. So that's, they have their, sorry, they have their, Hey, hey, uh, Craig, you can just go all at one time. If you want to, I might actually have to go get some water real quick. My throat's a little scratchy. That's fine. You can grab some Uh, water. I can, I can hold these guys off for a moment. All right. I'll be right back. All right. While Greg's getting his water, everybody, we're all going to just meditate for a minute on what it's like to be an awesome HVAC tech. Okay. If I had a button to push, I would push it, but I do. I actually do have a bunch of buttons I can push, but we're not going to do that. And we'll tell you that if you guys can think of a question here in a few minutes, we're actually going to take questions. So any comments, (laughs) it's in Kumbaya. I can do that, man. But people will click off the stream. Oh, look, that didn't take too long anyway. I I didn't have to do that much right there. I was just sitting there. I sang a little bit. Um, (laughs) Yeah. yeah. (laughs) It's all right, Greg. (laughs) Yeah. So I was just telling them that in a few minutes we can open it up to questions. If anyone has any questions, you can go ahead and type it in the chat. Just type it in all caps. It makes it easier to see. So So you had asked a question about um, what what do we actually do. Like, So there's some stuff that we won't do on the maintenance. Like uh, we have to charge you for – like if we have to go in and clean your evaporator coil – we have to charge for that, you know? So we, I charge like a level three for it. We have flat rate pricing. Uh, and so that's going to pay for us to get in there and clean that coil. 
Also, if uh, uh, if your blower motor's dirty, if your blower wheel's dirty, uh, we charge to pull that and and uh, clean that up for you because that takes time. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, newer techs that could take an hour and a half. You know, uh, senior experienced techs that could take uh, forty five minutes. But yeah, I agree with you completely on those two, especially because those could be really time consuming and they can have restraints as far as. Yeah. How much access there is, it can really t- throw mm-hmm. into a tailspin. So I, I totally agree on a with seventy-five dollar call too. You know, so right, uh, absolutely. And you seventy-five dollar call has now cost you four hundred dollars so far, and you're trying exactly. to wedge a blower out sideways to try to get it out of some weird closet where they put the water heater in front of it or something right. like that. So, so we come out on that service call, right? We we replace your capacitor for for two hundred ninety dollars. Uh, the service call is seventy-five dollars, so you're at three sixty-five right now. Or if you sign up for our club membership. Uh, fourteen ninety five a month, uh, or one seventy nine forty for the year. Nothing's due today on that. We just we just asked uh, on the fourteen ninety five. Uh, we start billing you next month on that. But uh, so what we'll do is we'll take the seventy five dollars service call off today. So you'll just be at two ninety. And uh, there's a lot of people really like the fact that that seventy five dollars service call comes off because that's what we do for our club members. <clears throat> is not only do we put them at the front of the line priority service, but we also don't charge them a service call fee anytime they have something that needs to be done, you know, and, and including coming out and changing their filter. Like if you, if you have your filters, we'll come out and change those things for us, you know, and that's just part of being a club member. And so there's old, there's older people that can't get up to that ceiling. Uh, we work, we do a lot of work in this uh, four seasons area. And I'm like, just give us a call. We'll come out and change that for you as long as you're a club member, you know, so. That's nice. That's a nice little touch right there. Mm-hmm. So. Club members, you get priority service. Now, describe what priority service is exactly. So Sasha and Melissa <clears throat> keep two calls open at the end of every day so that if a club member were to call in uh, and need service, then we have we we have a guy, one or two techs that's available, as especially as we're growing, one or two techs uh, during the busy season <clears throat> so that so we can send somebody out that day and get to you should your uh, system break down in between service, you know, uh, checks. <clears throat> so have you ever been overwhelmed by these calls in the summertime where you have priority guys, there's like 20 of them all of a sudden have called in? Nope. That's good. Nope. Yeah, no, actually we haven't, you know, some days it'll be two people, <clears throat> but, uh, but no, we don't really get overwhelmed with them. And thank God, you know what I mean? Like, thank God, because we're supposed to be out there making sure your system works you know, for the, for the year, you know, and so that's what the whole checkup was for, you know? So, right. um, <clears throat> we do have a, we do have the, uh, the occasional callback, like right after they left the maintenance and, um, one of the guys didn't, you know, plug Just the disconnect, disconnect back in yeah. or something like that. And you're like, yeah, Kyle was great, but, uh, my system doesn't work anymore. It's just blowing warm air. So a blank on the thermostat. Kyle yeah. was wonderful, <clears throat> but it doesn't work. So I guess he's not. <laughs> And uh, and then also those guys, the club members also get fifteen percent off parts and labor too. So great. So okay. <clears throat> so no service call fee ever. Front of line priority service, fifteen percent mm-hmm. off uh, parts and labor, and the two tune ups, and that's what you get as a club member. So it's 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 a no brainer when you have like a a control board or a or a, a compressor. You know, there's a difference between a couple hundred bucks. Like the 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 club membership pays for itself if. If you have like a difference between a twenty six hundred dollar compressor and a twenty three hundred dollar compressor, you know they're like, yeah, I'll definitely take the club membership. You know, it so. makes sense. And yeah, you're you're definitely <laughs> sacrificing a little bit of profit for that long term investment mm-hmm. for sure. And at the same time, if somebody doesn't club, I'm like, fine. You know, I take my three sixty five today instead of selling for two ninety. Yeah. You know, so I'm fine with that too. You can club them next time. <laughs> you're right. I feel so bad for you, Greg. I feel like you need a bottle of water with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, man. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just I, I, I know it happens to me sometimes. Oh, you got your bottle. Well, good. It happens yeah. to me sometimes. It's like your throat just goes dry. And it's like, well, there's 20 right minutes now. of live stream left. I'm dying inside. I get but. so excited when I'm talking about this stuff. <laughs> well, we did have some questions. Let's go ahead and hit some of these questions, and that I can read them slowly, and uh, you can try to salivate as much as possible. <laughs> Um, no, um, let's see if I can find one. Okay. HVAC residential basics, which is Steve says, what type of filters do you use and do they, and do they get repair discounts? I'm not sure what that refers to. That's probably uh, the 15% off, uh, parts and labor. Okay. So what type of filters so yeah, do you like? Dispatch 
for us to come out and they get 15% off parts and labor. So, <clears throat> and then the filters, not everybody's going to love me about this one, but I tell, I recommend people use the cheapest filters so that you're more inclined to uh, replace those filters every 30 uh, or every 90 days. So every three months, change your filters and don't necessarily need to buy the $20 filters, the 3M filters that you find at Target that are supremely marked up. I just use the meshy ones at home because then I'm more inclined to change them out. So I agree with you. I think those 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 other <clears throat> ones are really bad on static pressure. So I don't beat me up. Some people. <laughs> well, most of these people know that the static pressure gets destroyed by those things. So I think they'll be on your side on that one. I agree. I agree. Um, Tony Del Grego says, "Do you use software for pricing? You kind of <clears throat> mentioned flat rates. Do you use software for pricing jobs, or do you develop your own? I guess he's talking about install jobs. Then. Oh yeah, no. Um, so I have flat rate pricing for my installs. And I have flat rate pricing for my service parts. <clears throat> so uh, any capacitor I put in is going to be 290 um, or any four ton, 14 sear uh, train system is going to be 1190, 11590, you know, and <clears throat> sure we can add some stuff in on that, but but instead of going in and, you know, like figuring out like, oh, you're going to need this. That's five, five, you know, adding, you know, every single job up. We can just, you know, play the field. 11,590 is a four ton, 14 sear, including enlarging the return, which needs to be done on pretty much every job anyways. <clears throat> so, damn. <laughs> I feel so bad. Oh, well, I think you answered his question. All right, drink some water and I'll read another one. <laughs> Uh, we'll hit these questions and we'll wrap it up because uh, Greg needs to go out to the desert and scream. So Josh Moore writes, what was the deciding factor to finally bring in other people? And did the fear of being able to provide enough work ever subside? Okay. So that's a, that's a great question. We bring in people. You feel like basically it's almost like a family. You're taking care of these people. So did you have that fear when you started and how did you get over it? Since that first hire, my focus became more on taking care of my uh, employees than it did on uh, getting business or taking care of any customers. <clears throat> it's uh, from Keith, my first hire, it was all about keeping him busy. I knew when I started my business that I needed, uh, I needed 125 club members before I could hire my first customer, before I could hire my first employee. Because if I had those 125 um, club members, then I knew that I could keep a guy busy in the shoulder season with at least three or four maintenances a day, five days a week. So, um, and that would keep that, that would get the guy enough, um, work to go, you know, busy, stay busy on this, on the uh, shoulder seasons. <clears throat> uh, we've even gone as far, as far as, um, guaranteeing the guys 30 hours a week on the slow times of the year, like October, November, uh, for us, which is super slow. <clears throat> but, uh, I would so much rather keep a guy <clears throat> paid and happy and be able to provide for his family and, and all that stuff. And, you know, um, then to have to train a new guy next year, you know, I mean, like I've already got this guy trained, invest in that guy and keep him, keep him on board. But yeah, I definitely, definitely am very, very concerned about um, my employees and keeping them busy. That's a huge fear, but you have to overcome it too. Like if you have the maintenance club members, then the rest of the year, it takes care of itself. <clears throat> and the maintenance club membership forces you to grow because there's no way that one, uh, one employee is going to be able to take care of the thousand club members now. Right? So that's, that's why that's why I've been able to expand is because the club membership forces you to grow. That's a good point. That's a good point. And at 125 club members, if you're doing fifteen dollars a month at that time, which you might have adjusted it since then, uh, you would be almost two grand a month. So you'd have that cushion you need to feel better about hiring somebody. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, Steve did ask what Merv rating the filters were you were talking about, but I think you're talking about rock stoppers. So Merv the least. <laughs> Yeah, Merv, yeah. <laughs> Merv, Merv <low>. Z. <laughs> yeah. No, they're like the meshy filters that you can see through, like literally like the green meshy ones. You can get them for, uh, you can get a three pack of them for $7 at Home Depot, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's the ones this pin can make it through. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, they are good though. For static pressure, they're, they're, they're good. Um, uh, 
Texas Medley, our buddy Texas Medley, also oh, a business yeah. owner. What's up, Texas? <laughs> says, when is Greg fleeing California? Texas has done an amazing job with his business as well, Zach. Uh, you got to get him on this show as well and talk to him because he's done an amazing job of taking care of his guys and growing his business as well. So kudos to Texas for sure. Well, I'm going to make a point there. I think I spoke to him at one point about doing that, and we're going to do it then. Okay, Greg says Definitely. It. Texas, you know, I've been around for a long time. He changed his name to Texas Medley, but besides that, he's been the same old guy this whole time. So absolutely. But are you going to go to Austin like everybody else in California? Austin, Texas, no. to live there? <laughs> I had I had uh, Justin Ingleiter uh, was working for me, and he moved him and his family moved down to uh, Dallas, Fort Worth area. And I actually tried to hook him up. I actually called Texas and said, Hey, are you going to, uh, would you mind giving this guy a look, you know, and maybe hot, give him a job, you know? And <clears throat> he said he would look him over, but, uh, but Justin wanted to go back to a, a commercial place that he'd been working there before. So, right. So that's, that's a good, uh, <clears throat> well, I'll give you a couple more questions, Greg, and then I'll let you go uh, cough in the bathroom for a little while. <laughs> um, what's a split on residential commercial at your company? And is that a design split? Is that something you envisioned? Yeah, we don't do a lot of uh, commercial. We do a lot of light commercial um, and not even a lot of that, I guess. So uh, I would say 98% of our work is residential. Okay. All right. And mm -hmm. then when you get into commercial, are you talking about like strip mall commercial, like something that's like the step up from residential? Yeah, like, uh, you know, like Fast Signs down the street uh, who does our logos and stuff like that, the uh, signs for us. They have a, you know, they got a five-ton package unit on top of their unit, you know, so we'll go work on that. Um these uh, smaller warehouses, they have package units on the top of them or, or, or mini splits on them. Um, we actually did an install on them. But you know what? I mean, like some guys have figured out the commercial business. You know, like if you look at Curtis, Curtis has done a great job figuring out the commercial side of things. You're not talking about Curtis uh, Bowers, are you? Yeah, I sure am. Mr. Bowers. <laughs> I just talked to him today. We're going to podcast tomorrow. So, yeah, right. no, he's he's done a great job figuring out the commercial business. If you haven't seen any of his work lately, it's really impressive. Um, and he's really working on some big stuff. But we do residential because that's what we're really good at. You know what I mean? I've learned, I've learned, Zach, you know, I was doing solar for a little bit. Uh, I think when I first started, I was going to do duct cleaning for a little bit. But every time I, I get out of my cover zone and want to do something else, like putting in water heaters or stuff like that, I always end up like just realizing I should just do what I, I just, I should just do what I'm good at, which is residential HVAC. Yeah. And I will also go as far to say that there is a slight difference between commercial technicians and residential technicians. Now, I'm not trying to insult anybody, but um, <clears throat> uh -oh. but commercial technicians can be a little on the rougher side. And um, <laughs> you don't have They're to confirm that roof. or anything. No one can That's see totally them. me talking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I love I love all the guys out there. I could not do the commercial gig. Um, personally, because the margins are so tight, like it, I, I can't make any money, uh, on that. So residential. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't blame you. I did residential my whole career with a little bit of commercial, like you said, probably 90, 10 or something like that. So, all right, Greg, I'm gonna let you off the hook here, but I want to ask you one last question. All right. So you've gotten to this point now, it's 2020 next year, next two years. What do you envision happening? Continue the same growth curve that you've been on? Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> I think I have to, I think I really have to focus on it, hiring two installers. So if you're an installer out there <clears throat> and you want a, a good place to work, <laughs> I really need two installers <laughs> for next year. And that's Sacramento. Uh, what, Sacramento. It is, is, what it is, is um, Zach is my guy, my, my guys could be out there running service calls, selling more systems so that I can keep my installers busy. Like I was telling you about that one company, it's one owner. And he's running all the service calls and six installers. I'm like, where are the other service call, you know, techs? We don't have, we just have installers and him. And I'm like, damn, so I'm, I'm not doing something right. Like I don't, I don't have a, de a, de a dedicated install crew. And so that's what I'm going to focus on is uh, my next two hires are going okay. to be installers because the guys, you know, the guys are getting beat up, you know I mean? Like there's service techs that I made installers. And after a while, you know, you need to like, figure out what you're going to do because you might end up losing these guys because they're not going to do install the rest of their life. You know, it's true. It, it, there's, there's a progression there and it goes from <clears> install <throat> to service because usually it's a change from rigorous physical to moderate physical. And people like that as they get older. 
Um, do you have it in you for one more question, Greg? We got a question in here. Oh, man. Shoot away. My throat is actually feeling better by the question. So hey, there we go. All right. Adam is writing, what's your thoughts? And now you're going to like die. You're going to be like, oh, I got COVID. Adam, what's your thoughts on utilizing the wireless products like Sensi Predict to incorporate an on-demand maintenance type plan? And have you seen the Sensi Predict? Yeah, man, it's uh, super sharp. And it's a, it's another, it's, it's possibly another source of re, uh, of recurring revenue as well. You know, it's sort of like a, an add on to your club membership, you know, so we can, we can keep track of your, the, the performance of your system. We can monitor your system <clears throat> from the, from the warehouse. You can also monitor it, but we, we can also monitor your system as well. And uh, it'll give us sort of alerts when, when your temperature split isn't right or your amp draw is too high super cool and definitely a thing of the future i just cannot figure out how i'm going to incorporate it uh and get people to subscribe to it because well, that's ah, my there's question. just some challenges right now to it so. yeah it seems like it's almost like a commercial deal instead of residential and that to put it into residential it's going to take a special type of customer and yeah. i don't know if there's going to be enough of them to a make it worthwhile customer. it's going to be a techie customer and and uh, the the up and coming generation is that type of customer. I just don't know if we're, we're there yet. You know, right? So. No, I definitely agree. They're they're out there for sure, and they love looking at stuff like that. So I have all these Wi Fi thermostats that give you that book to read every month. But I, about a recurring thing, I don't know how much you have to charge for Sensi Predict. I'm I'm not quite sure how that'll pl play out. But I know in commercial it seems to fit really well because you have a lot of machines on a roof and discerning which one is broken is somewhat difficult. You don't know until there's multiple issues. A lot of times it'd be nice to be able to spot them as True. they pop up. But you actually got another question as well. <laughs> yeah. You're on a roll. Uh, how do you feel yeah. about 10 year parts and labor on new systems? It's from Steve. Yeah. Oh, so here's what we do, Steve. And it, and it comes into our, <clears throat> our club membership. So the manufacturer uh, provides a 10 year warranty on this system we provide a two-year labor warranty and we're also going to come out and do the preventive maintenance for your system for the first two years. I just, I just incorporate that in, you know, between you and me, Zach, that we just incorporate that into the price of our install mm -hmm. so that, that whatever, uh, 179 times two, um, just gets kind of thrown into the price of the install. So we're going to come out for the first two years and do the preventive maintenance on your system. Mm -hmm. uh, that way you get a chance to see how we do on our preventive maintenance, see if you like us or anything. And if you do keep your maintenance going from years three through 10, then we'll keep your labor warranty going out until all the way out to 10 years. So if you just keep your maintenance going uh, all the way out to 10 years with us, uh, then uh, if, if your system breaks for the first 10 years, you won't pay a dime. And so we're getting our club members, Steve, and they're getting their labor warranty. And you're not having to like buy a pack, you know, we don't we don't go out and buy like a, 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 a labor warranty package from some third party entity. We just kind of take care of it all in house. So now what's the reasoning you don't want to buy it from the third party entity? I really don't need to, you know, I mean, like, uh, like they're paying me for the club membership and I guess I just don't see us losing a lot of money on that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Right. I just, I don't know. I just don't see us losing a lot of money that way. And I've just taken the calculated risk that I'm not going to pay for that. You're assuming so, the role of the third party entity, just keeping it in house. I just keep it in house. Yeah. Okay. Well, the questions are, are firing. Yeah, let's here. do it. <laughs> do it, man. I got time. Uh, I know you did install whole house fans, but Cameron's writing, do you guys install whole house fans and vent outside or just into the attic? So I guess I'm picturing a whole house fan from back in the day where it just blows into the attic. Now, what did you do before? Oh, that's totally the quiet, cool whole house fans and the traditional whole house fan. I have a video on that. I have a couple videos on my on whole house fans on my channel. <clears throat> and yeah, they just vent into the attic. So mm -hmm. you have, and, but I mean, ultimately, you know, just like did, just like indirect venting uh, for your furnace, ultimately you're still getting your air out to the you know atmosphere through dormer vents, through e vents. You have to make sure you have enough ventilation, uh, and and the instruction book says that you know if you it, uh, when you when you open up the box and it says, hey, you need to have this much ventilation for this uh, size unit. And if you don't do that, then you're going to start creating pressure inside the attic, and those and that pressure is going to push down into the the top plates where the electrical wires are coming in, 
And then that air is going to be blowing out of the outlet covers and, and things like that in the house. So, <clears throat> yeah, but I've never actually had it directly vent to a roof uh, through the roof sheathing itself. I've never seen that either. But I guess that is a thing. Maybe I don't. I don't know why. But yeah, you just have to have the proper gable venting or ridge venting or whatever. And like yeah. you said, they'll tell you how much you need. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, Will Justice, are you guys finding it hard to get young techs for your business? So you found some people over the years, and you've added them every now and then. Has it been difficult finding people when you need them? Nope. No, it just hasn't. I mean, I know that the. Uh... You know, I know that uh, Mike Rowe says there's a huge <clears throat> shortage of <clears throat> workers, but I don't know. Just in this area, I have not I really had a hard time finding people, um, maybe experienced techs. But am I actually looking for those guys? Not really. I'm looking for <clears throat> I'm looking for guys maybe coming out of tech school who have uh, or army or something like that who have great personalities, and then uh, and then I can teach them to be a tech because. Our training program, Keith, his training is very fluid and it's and, it, and it's also focused on what we do. So you're not getting like this huge, broad education of the entire industry uh, in like you do in HVAC school. You come as an apprentice to us and you learn how to do our maintenances, our service calls, our installs and and come up that way. So I really haven't had a hard time knock on wood. <laughs> uh, knock on Wait wood. Mark, but right? I haven't had a hard time finding people. I, <laughs> I can go on Indeed and post an ad an ad there. I can um post on Facebook just on my regular page and like somebody's parents will be like, "Yeah, my my son needs a job or, you know." And right. so, yeah, pretty uh, Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing. All right, let's see any other questions down there. Um no, I don't think so, Greg. I All right. Greg, I'm going to stop our interview right there. You did a great job. That's a lot of great information, man. Well, I, Zach, really I tell you what, and, and all you guys listening and stuff and watching Zach, uh, CEO to do his thing. He's been doing it for years. He's an OG. And like um, OG. You, you really are, man. And I, I'm, I'm proud of everything you've done for yourself and your family as well. So, Well, I appreciate that, Greg. I think we've both gotten to where we wanted to be or we're heading that way, at least, mm -hmm. it seems like to me. Uh, I want to thank you for coming by, and uh, we're going to have you back because uh, we didn't get uh, – we touched on some subjects that we want to go farther into. I think some of the, the labor warranty stuff and installs and setting up on the backside of installs for what you're going to do years 2 through 10, I think we could talk more about that probably. Yeah, um, anytime. Okay. So I'm going to I'm gonna let you go, Greg. We're going to take a little break, and when we come back, Greg will be gone, but don't be sad because he'll be back again sometime. Okay. Thanks, man. Uh, thank you, Greg. The NP4 DLM cordless vacuum pump from Navac features a high-performance lithium battery capable of up to one hour of continuous running time. Weighing a scant 15.4 pounds, this unit is exceedingly efficient and for technicians, easy to carry and store. The NP4 DLM's twin cylinder operation provides high vacuum down to 15 microns. To save 8% off this product when you purchase, go to truetechtools.com and use our Shop Talk discount code. Well, guys, I think I had a really good time. I think Greg did an awesome job. Um, I knew he'd do a good job. He, like, knocked it out of the park. He had a lot of great information. It was great to talk to him again. It's been a while. Since I was able to talk to him, I know we did, we've done podcasts before. We've done live stuff before. So it was awesome. I think we did a great job. Uh, I want to thank you guys for dropping in and checking it out. And remember, if you want to see the skilled trade up, 8 p.m. Wednesday nights, Eastern time. All this stuff's Eastern time. I'm in North Carolina. So we play the skilled trade up. Feel free to come on that show and watch or play or whatever you want to do. Uh, I want to thank all of you for checking out this channel because it's brand new and I think we did a really good job with our first live stream, and I hope that next week we can at least match what we've done here tonight. I'm not sure who's going to be up next week. I've had a couple ideas. I was thinking about getting Tersh back, another business owner who's done a lot as far as growing and sustaining HVAC businesses, but I haven't asked him yet, so, so, don't, so don't tell him yet. But uh, I am going uh, to talk to our chat guys one more time before we go here. I want to thank Texas Medley. It's good to see you in the chat, man. Um, let's, uh, let's hook up somehow. I don't know if you have my number. 
But uh, you have my email probably, hvacshoptalk at gmail.com. Shoot me an email. We'll set something up. I'll get you some gear if you need it, and we'll uh, we'll, we'll make a show of it. Because that's multiple people who have been complimenting you, so I want to figure out what you've been doing all these years. Uh, James, Patrick, good to see you. Tony Del Grego, good to see you. Josh Moore, Will Justice, Cameron Royal. Um, let's see who else we have here. Adam Heisch. We'll talk more about some of this stuff, guys. If you have, if you heard something we talked about tonight and you say, I would like to hear more about that, they didn't touch on it enough, feel free to shoot me an email, okay? Anytime. Shoot me an email. Say, Zach, will you find somebody to talk about this? And I will find somebody and we will talk about it, okay? If I know about it, I'll help too. But uh, I like to find some knowledgeable people. I'm one of them people that know a little bit about a lot of stuff. But I'm not really a master of anything. It's called residential HVAC technician. That's what we are. We know a little bit about a lot of stuff, but we're not masters of anything. But I'll find you a master and we'll interview them. So, all right. I just got the message. Greg says, thanks. Thank you, Greg. It was a lot of fun. So, all right, guys. I'm going to get out of here. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks to the sponsors of the show. You saw a couple of them here tonight to make the show possible. It keeps me doing this stuff and finding these guys and hopefully giving you guys a lot of good information and I hope we can continue to do that for a long time to come. If you want to support the channel, we don't have channel memberships and super chats because our channel is too small for that right now. But in the description, you can support us at Subscribestar if you want to, which we appreciate. So until we get back next week, I'll see you Wednesday night. We have a podcast, HVAC Shop Talk podcast, releasing Monday. That's going to be talking about ammonia refrigeration. I have Ulysses Palacios and Cameron Conley. They also have a podcast called HVAC Radio, which you can tune into to hear more commercial and res or commercial and industrial stuff. So I talked a little bit with them about industrial stuff, which is out of my norm. So I had a good time learning about that. And I think a lot of us out there, residential techs, will learn a lot. And if you are a ammonia tech, for once you'll listen to Shop Talk and go, finally, something that I understand. So, all right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I really appreciate it. Y'all work safe. Take it easy. Have a good weekend. And I'll see you on the next one.